Hmm? Okay, so uh, this approach. by calculating the derivatives of the components. So we get in the numerator, we've got the derivative of sine. And in the denominator, we've got the derivative of cos. And when we evaluate at t is pi by 4, we get here. And both of these are, are 1 over roots 2. I like approach one slightly more than approach two. Um, any guesses as to why approach one is slightly nicer? Yes. Uh, it's faster. Yeah, it's slightly faster. Yeah, that's nice. Um, the the other thing is that it saves you this this business with deciding plus or minus, right? It just works just on the definition of the curve. Right, so if you can't go from the parametric to eliminate parameters, uh, this just relies on the definition of the curve. So I, I slightly prefer this one. Yes. Uh, so you talked about like the order, uh, like uh, the alternative uh, representations. Yep. Uh, but like, wouldn't that affect the derivative? Like for like other values of t, wouldn't that affect the? Because like now cos and sine would swap, right? Um. Uh, yes. Yes, that would happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you go, yeah, so you're saying what happens here and what happens here. Yeah. So it turns out that pi by 4 lives on di at different places on these curves. On these alternatives, it lives at different places. Um, So we've got one circle that's really, really, really beautiful. But if we plug in these alternatives, right? Um, aha, this will give us the, the same point. same point that we had before. Very nice. But if we plug in the alternative, uh, this guy, So here we've got slope n equals negative 1. Here we've got slope 1. OK, so that, that's an interesting point. Depending on the, the representation you pick, you can get different slopes uh, at a particular value of t. Okay, So when you see this sort of a question, find the tangent line to this thing, it will give you a particular representation and a particular value of t. So the representation can affect the slope. OK, so we've got the slope. We've got the point. So we can use our grade 9 skills to 
come up with a equation for the tangent line. Okay. Is there anyone who really wants to see the calculation of the equation of the tangent line? No? People who are like, okay, there's one person? Just for you. All right, it's just for you. <laughs> uh, so what do we do? We start here. Um, now we've got a particular value of the slope. Okay, now we can plug in the point. Okay, so good. often comes up is people aren't sure if something like this is simplified enough or is in the correct form. If you're ever doubtful of that during a test or a uh, quiz, exam, anything like that, just please ask the TA. Okay. Um, so if you're ever like, I don't know if this is a adequately written final answer, just ask us if you should do that next step. Okay. Um, I have a policy that if things are equal, they count for the same amount of marks. So both of these should be the correct final answer. Um, okay. Yes? For the final answer, would you ever ask us to write it to parametric form instead of Cartesian? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you'll you could get some specification about how to write that final. Questions are okay. So our major thing for the day. So this is our piece of how to take derivatives on, polar, on parametric curves. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about how to integrate on polar on parametric curves. Okay, so how could we find, say, the area of this region? So we've done the, the, the bit about derivatives. Uh, I encourage you to do the readings, look at the readings, and then we'll come back and talk about uh, integration and okay. Thank you very much. Oh, and if you've got questions, please come up. Three. We're done at three, yes. Sorry, 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 sorry. I completely bungled up the time. Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh, sorry. This this clock says three. I thought I had. So I'm looking at the clock. It's like holy cannoli. That was really fast. Because <laughs> this clock says three. Sorry. It's three forty-seven. It's three forty-seven. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll trust my watch. Oh, now we've got tons of time. This is brilliant. Okay, great. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
And back on math. Um, okay, so uh, right. So we have to think a little bit about how we usually integrate things, right? So to usually find area, we do something like this. is that we're integrating the y-coordinate of our curve. So what we're doing is we've got um, some continuous curve. lots and lots of little rectangles and adding up their heights. Who, who saw Riemann sums in their class? Riemann sums? Okay. Almost all people uh, saw this Riemann sum interpretation of area. The idea is that in the vertical direction we've got y's, and in the horizontal direction we've got dx's. Right? So at each point we add up the size of a rectangle like that, and if we add up enough of these, we should get the area under the curve. So now what we have to do is we have to sort of vary this to make sense in the context of parametric curves. Right? So we've got some curve going along through space and we want to calculate the area under it. So let's look at that um, shaded region that I had before. Okay, so here, uh, we'll pick that parameterization. And this goes counterclockwise. Right, we start here and we sort of move in this direction. Okay. 
parametric curves also come with this notion of where they're pointing. Uh, so yeah, if we want to calculate the area here, okay, we need to do something like Riemann sums as we go from t equals zero up to t equals pi by two. Now, here, when we do the usual Riemann sum thing, right, all of the dx's are of uniform size. Now we're going to have to take into account the fact that our x is changing as well. Okay, so if we, if we apply this formula directly to this context, which is kind of weird. Right? Usually we don't have things beside that D. Right? So what this is trying to calculate for us is the height of those rectangles. somehow of that width. So one place where we've seen expressions like d cos t is as um, derivatives in, the form, in this form. So to figure out what d cos t is doing, we can say, okay, well this is 